So today, I want to share with you my top heavy assault class in Planet Side 2. I want to discuss loadouts, weapons and their attachments and try and give you some helpful tips along the way on using this class and I hope you'll learn something new from my perspective. So I'm going to be starting with abilities, then move on to suit slots, utilities, grenades and finally wrap each class up with my favourite weapon for the NC Heavy Assault and give you some recommendations for VS and TR also. Now, this class is deemed the OP class by many because of the survivability it gives you from the use of the ability shield. The high rate of fire on most gun choices and not forgetting the faction specific weapons available for the heavy and the high ammo capacities offered by the light machine guns. With all this in mind, I find that it works best in most situations and excels overall on point holds and pushes and dropping with a squad onto a point from a galaxy primarily because of the high damage you can sustain while gunning down numerous targets. This will then give you a much needed advantage to retake the point from the enemy. When playing Heavy Assault, I find that the ability shield that suits me the most is the Adrenaline Shield. It is identical to the Nanite Mesh Generator, except that it can be recharged by killing enemies. Additional certification levels increase the amount restored to up to 44% of shield strength per kill. In contrast to the Nanite Mesh Generator, where additional levels reduce the recharge time. Kills restore the adrenaline shield, whether it is active or inactive. When inactive, the shield also recharges over time, identically to the default level 1 nanite mesh generator. Resist shield is an alternative on the adrenaline shield, and may suit your playstyle more. The resist shield does not prevent damage while active, but instead mitigates it. As a result, it is not adversely affected by damage received, making its sustained operational duration limited only by the size and efficiency of the power source. The resist shield does not stack with the bonus from nano weave or flak armor. It provides 40% resistance to damage when activated. The difference is that the adrenaline shield recharges with each kill of an enemy. Leveling up adrenaline shield increases the amount of shield recharged by each kill from 31% at level 1 and up to 44% at level 5. Compared to the NMG, where additional levels reduce the recharge time of the shield when inactive, from 30 seconds at default level 1 down to 20 seconds at level 6, kills recharge adrenaline shield, whether the shield is active or inactive. Note that only kills count as cysts do not recharge the shield. The adrenaline shield also recharges over time when inactive, but only at the same rate as the default level 1 NMG. Another significant difference is that the Adrenaline Shield has a much higher cert cost, requiring 2250 to fully cert, while NMG only takes 831. Now, I use my classes probably different from most, so please only take what you need from this and work out what is best for you in the long run. However, just stay away from the Nanite Mesh Generator, as it's not the better option. If you are a player that uses cover well to your advantage, then the best suit slot for you would be the Advanced Shield Capacitor. The Advanced Shield Capacitor is a suit modification that reduces the recharge delay for damaged or depleted personal shields. This gives you a fast shield recharge rate when out of combat of 4 seconds on max rank, with a total cert cost of 200 on the heavy. If you run Advanced Shield Capacitor, you will be the best match with medkits as a utility slot as your shield will be forced to recharge quicker when you're back at full health and it's always difficult to find a medic that isn't busy team killing on NC. If you are like me and you rush into every stupid situation you can find, then Nano Weave Armor will most likely suit your playstyle. This is now given free for any new start character. The Nano Weave Armor is a suit certification that increases the amount of small arms resistance at max rank to 20%. Nano Weave Armor does not protect against headshots or explosive damage and does not stack with heavy assaults resist shield, so please bear that in mind. The Flak Armor is an alternative suit certification that reduces the amount of damage taken from explosions. It can be certified to reduce the damage up to 50%, making this certification extremely useful in almost any situation. Flak Armor resists direct damage from explosive weapons in addition to resisting AoE damage. Max rank will cost you 1,211 certs to unlock. Munitions pouch at max rank 
gives you four more rockets, costing 1,650 sets to unlock at max rank. Ammunition belt at max rank is 550 sets, and this provides two more magazines of ammunition. Grenade bandolier is three more grenades at max rank, costing 750 sets. These are all variations for the ability slot, but are for use in the situations where you think it will benefit you mostly. This is not important to search straight away, but I do recommend getting it as soon as you can. I primarily use grenade bondolier when defending a base or biolab to spam a point or building. It's not super effective at getting kills every time, but it will force the enemy to run from cover, which offers a huge benefit in my opinion. The different grenade slots for a heavy are the frag grenade, and exclusive to this class, the anti-vehicle grenade and the concussion grenade. A frag grenade is capable of doing massive area of effect damage to the infantry, whilst also dealing with some damage to the max units. This is unlocked for free from the start. I personally at the minute am using the anti-vehicle grenade. As suggested by the name, the grenade does a fair amount of damage to vehicles, but it can also be used against infantry and maxes. It does however deal less damage to infantry than the ordinary grenades, but it can deal heavy damage to maxes. A really great addition to the anti-vehicle grenade is that it will also stick to vehicles and maxes, which is great for clearing a point. The AV nade is unlocked for 100 sets. The concussion grenade, when it detonates, causes a temporary effect on all infantry caught within its blast radius, slowing movement and aiming. Successful use of these grenades allows players to overpower enemies lying in wait behind doors and cover. A concussion grenade has a 3 second fuse timer and doesn't explode on impact. This costs 200 sets to unlock. C4 is a utility available to the heavy assault. When equipped, Hitting right mouse by default will cause you to throw a brick of explosive that will stick to most surfaces, including vehicles. Hitting left mouse will detonate all currently placed explosive simultaneously. A single, well-placed charge will destroy a max, a flash ATV, empire-specific fighter or critically damage a stock lightning. Two of them will destroy a main battle tank or critically damage a sundering. Three charges are required to destroy a Librea and five are required for a Galaxy. C4's main drawback is cost, requiring 200 certifications for a single brick, 500 for the second and 75 resources each to resupply, which can be a costly if you make a mistake somewhere. Medkits are a favourite for me in my build, for the additional survivability offered with medkits. If you plan it right, you can restore a portion of your health instantly and survive with numerous enemies shooting you for a short duration. A recent patch has made the medkit, upon use, have to be re-equipped to use it again to stop spam healing. Maxing the rank of medkits will allow you to carry 4 medkits in total, costing 830 sets. The great selling point to me with the medkits is that this is universal certification, so once unlocked it is available to all classes, so this is a must needed first buy. The Heavy Assault's main role is to be one of the most efficient means of killing infantry, while also serving as a mobile anti-vehicle role. The Heavy Assault also benefits from Empire specific weaponry and light machine guns, NC has the jackhammer, TR the mini chain gun, or as I like to call it, the chain sniper gun, and the VS have the long lashes, or the curly whirly shooter, and formerly known as the lasher. Heavy assaults are designed to be on the front lines. They can completely eliminate a group of unaware or inattentive enemies very quickly. When playing heavy assault, the main focus for you when trying to attack enemy vehicles is to get a spot where you can shoot them from behind, where their armour is the weakest. If you can see that the enemy is using reinforced front armour, try aiming from the sides if it isn't possible to hit the rear. The front of any vehicle is always the strongest. All light aircraft, Mosquito, Reaver and Scythe require three rockets from anti-air launchers to be shot down. However, two rockets will set them on fire, but they have a relatively long reload on, so most occasions it's difficult for you to always finish the kill. Avoid confronting max units in a head-on fight. Unless you bring a lot of friends, or the Max is carrying two bursts as primary weapons. Especially avoid them if you are about to get out of rockets. Max units are best attacked from cover, or sneak in behind the Max for some spooky rockets. Concussion grenades are one of the most important things in the Heavy Assault's arsenal. Concussions stun enemies for a few seconds, greatly lowering their mass sensitivity and making their screen blurry. Just be warned, you can also concuss your friendly teammates. A serious disadvantage of the Heavy Assault class is its reload time. 
Try to ensure your weapons are filled to the top before entering combat. It may take up to roughly 8 seconds to reload your weapon. You do however have the largest magazine capacity of any class, but always watch your ammo. If you find yourself about to run out of your primary ammo, be prepared to make a quick swap to your pistol if in close combat, or a rocket launcher to bring down a max. Always find a safe place before reloading, and try to find an engineer if you need ammunition. Heavy assaults are great in tight spots due to their shield giving an extra chance of survival, combined with the firepower. A heavy with a shotgun, or a shotgun shitter, or SMG, makes the heavy deadly in close quarters. Dueling is best done with hip fire, while AD. Once your enemy shields are damaged or down, aim down the sights and finish them off. Another thing to remember is if you are in close combat, do not burst fire, give them full auto. If it isn't another heavy assault you are facing, they will likely run out of ammo before you do. If you are engaged in medium to long range, use the burst fire as a heavy, otherwise you will just end up firing around your target. Assault weapons have a large cone of fire and recoil. It takes a lot of ammo to kill one person, roughly 20 to 30 bullets, including misses. Most people forget to use their special ability by activating using your F key. You should always use your ability shield. But you may ask, when is the best time to use it? Should you use it before you run in, or perhaps during the fight? Ideally, try to turn them on just before your default shields are depleted. This way, you have a chance of surviving longer and allow you to get to safety, or take down the other infantry. Rockets in close quarters is mainly purely for maxes and ground vehicles that are close enough to be right outside the structure in point blank ranges. So, normally it's recommended to equip the decimator rocket launcher, equipped with the shape charge for maximum damage. The heavy assault is capable of employing its shield generator ability and killing prowess during small outpost captures. This battle tactic requires the ability to be flexible in range and thus equip light machine guns with mid range scopes, laser sights, and infantry grenades. An anti ground lock on rocket launcher is also a nice complement for the small outpost capture or defense. So, now I bring you to weapons. My favourite weapon, I him on the heavy assault, has to be the NC6 Scarsaw, shortly followed by the LA1 Anchor and the GD22S. The Scarsaw is a standard default weapon for the NC. Its high damage can kill enemies in 5 hits at close range or 6 at long range. Add one bullet for nano weave armour. It also has a 100 round magazine, however its incredibly long 6.5 second short reload and 7.5 second long reload, an incredibly high recoil and a low rate of fire. For TR, I can recommend the T9 Carve, the MSWR, and for range, the TMG50. The T9 Carve is a standard default weapon for the TR. This is a true LMG as its high rate of fire and magazine size, but poor hit fire accuracy and little mobility. Aiming is a must. This weapon is not suited to CQC. It is more rewarding to use a type of playstyle highly favoured among heavy assaults on the more mobile and better hip fire orientated weapons. On VS will always have to be the Orion VS-54, followed by the SV-88 and then the Pulsar LSW. The Orion is a faction specific light machine gun. It appears as a standard issue VS LMG with many other LMGs in the VS arsenal sporting a very similar design. The main trait of this weapon is its fire rate. At 750 rounds per minute, it is the fastest firing LMG in the VS arsenal and it ties with the TR's MSWR and T9 Carve for the fastest firing LMG in the game. This allows this weapon to drop people at close range with ease. It also has decent ADS and hip fire accuracy. Rocket launchers can be used to take down enemy ground or air vehicles, as well as tightly packed squads or mana turrets. I find that the basic rocket launchers are just as good as the others but others have lock-on and fire variations, depending on which one you pick, so I've broken them down as the following. For dump fire, you have the ML7 for TR, the Shrike for NC, and the S1 for VS. These are one-shot, dump fire, they can't be guided rocket launchers that deal heavy damage. These are the starting rocket launchers for each faction. Anti-ground rocket launchers is the M9 for TR, the AF-22 for NC, and the Hades for VS. These are one-shot rocket launchers that can both dump fire and lock onto ground vehicles. These deal slightly less damage than the standard ones. The time needed to lock on any ground vehicle varies respectively with distance from the desired target. The closer you are, the faster the weapon lock-ons. The farther away you are, the longer the weapon needs to lock onto the target. 
For Air, the ASP30 for TR, the Hawk for NC and the Nemesis for VS. These are also one-shot rocket launchers that can both dump fire and lock onto air vehicles. These also deal slightly less damage than the standard ones. The time needed to lock on also varies according to the distance from target. The NS variant rocket launchers including the Decimator, the Kraken and the Annihilator. The Decimator and the Kraken deal more damage than the standard dumpfire rocket at the cost of holding one less rocket in reserve and having a slightly slower rocket velocity. The Annihilator can lock onto both air and ground vehicles, but it deals low damage and can't dump fire. Both of these rocket launchers are available to all factions. The faction specific rocket launchers are the Striker for TR, the Phoenix for NC and the Lancer for VS. These rocket launchers all have their own unique abilities. The Striker carries six rockets in a magazine that deal low damage per rockets and these rockets are dumb fired but will lock onto the enemy aircraft if they are close enough to it. The Phoenix shoots a camera guided rocket that the user can control. The Lancer features a charge up mechanic where the more you charge it the faster and more damage than the beam will be. You can find more about them in other guides on YouTube. I'm going to leave you now with a few short clips of some recent gameplay and hopefully you can use these as a further example of what I've talked about today and learn from them. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Alright, yeah, if, you, if you're going to beacon, get heavies. Some use them 15%. If you get on the beacon, get heavies, but still, I want some light assault there. Alright, Alpha Squad, let's start working our way there as well. Stone her down, okay, clean up. No one else does. What is it? The, what's the quick? It's a fucking video. Have it in sight? Yes. Dip, dip, potato chip.